Okay, there's a lot of settings here, so if you need to get to a particular one, go to the table of contents down below in the description. To program our settings, we use these four buttons across the bottom row. Um, you press and hold the enter button, and you enter program mode. Uh, notice program number one is blinking. You can use your up and down buttons to go through the different program numbers. Program three, program four, and so forth. We'll go back. When you're on the program that you want to edit, hit the enter button again. Now notice that the parameter is blinking. And then you can change the parameters by using your up and down buttons. When you get to the parameter that you want to save, just press the enter button again. Notice that the program number is blinking, but the parameter has gone solid, and that means you've saved it. When you're finished, you just hit the escape button to go back to the main window. And we're going to start with setting number one, which chooses the priority of the source of power. And you see you have three parameters to choose from, SBU, solar, or utility. And SBU stands for solar battery utility in that order. Ordinarily, you'll run on solar and battery, but you'll switch to the grid if the battery voltage drops below the setting that you'll enter at setting number 12. So let's go up to setting number 12. And it's currently set for 44, and right now our battery level is about 47.7. So we're going to change this and force it to switch over to utility. And you just do this by moving the up and down and hit enter every time you've got the number that you want. And we'll set it to 47.7. Hit enter again. And it takes it. And there we're going to go back, escape to the main display. And you can see our current battery voltage is about 47.7. Okay, and here we are. Uh, notice that the light is blinking right now. There we go. Now the voltage is starting to drop, and they're just switched over. And the green light in the upper left that was blinking a second ago has now gone solid, telling us we're on grid power. And from the utility pole icon, you see a line that's connected to the load, showing us that we're now running our loads off of the utility power. Okay, so that was SBU mode. Let's look at SOL or solar mode. So again, we just use our up and down buttons to switch to solar mode. And solar mode is very similar to SBU. They both run on solar and battery. They're both going to switch to the grid. The difference is solar mode will switch to the grid whenever your panels are not making any power. So basically, SBU mode can still run after sunset off of your battery. Uh, solar mode will not run off of your battery alone. It has to have the solar panels working also. Also, I just want to point out that the whole reason for setting number 12 is to protect your batteries from getting too low. Uh, now let's take a quick look at the utility mode. Utility mode just works like a giant UPS, a uh, backup system. It runs off of the grid, switches you over to solar and battery when the grid goes out. Okay, to simulate a power outage, I'm going to disconnect the AC power from the grow watt right now. And there we go. You can now see that we're running back on the battery again and the inverter. And now we're going to go to setting number two, which is the total charging power. The GrowWatt has two chargers, a grid charger and a solar charger. And this is the maximum number of amps that both of those chargers can produce added together. Since I don't really use my charger in the GrowWatt, it is set for the minimum, but it goes up to 120 amps. And setting number three is the acceptable range of voltages from the grid or utility input. Um, first, you have this appliance mode, which is a range of 65 to 140 volts. And next is the generator mode, which is also 65 to 140 volts, but it's set up for running with your generator. And lastly, we have the UPS mode, which has a little tighter range. It goes from 95 volts to 140 volts, acceptable, more for uh, electronics and personal computers. Okay, and setting number four, this is the power saver mode. Uh, the DS here stands for disabled, which is the default, and it doesn't do anything right now. If you enable it with the EN here, then 
the inverter will turn itself off whenever there's not a load on it. Well, since I've got loads that run basically 24-7 here, um, I always leave this disabled. Okay, next, the battery type. Um, I leave mine in user mode. Uh, I'm using it with some lithium-ion batteries, but you also have choices of a flooded lead-acid battery. Um, also a standard AGM battery. And this next one is LI, which is lithium, but it is only for the GrowWatt lithium batteries, which are supposed to come out in the future, and then their BMS will talk to the GrowWatt inverter, which would be cool. Um, but if you're using any other kind of lithium battery, like I am, you would do it on user mode, and then you can set your own charging parameters on some other settings that we'll see in just a minute. And we go to setting number six. Um, I'm not even sure what the uh, symbols are, especially the one in the middle here. But anyway, if it ends in an E, it's enabled. And it means the uh, GrowWatt inverter will restart if it overloads. And when it ends in a D, it, the auto restart is disabled and the GrowWatt will shut itself down if it overloads. And setting number seven is very similar to that, except it's about temperature. Uh, it will auto restart if the temperature gets too high. And that's on E. And if it is on NZ and D, it's disabled. And the grow watt inverter will shut down on a high temperature. Next is setting number eight, which is the output voltage. And that is uh, normally at 120 volts. That's the default. Uh, but you could also set it for 110 volts or 100 volts. And setting number nine is the output frequency. And your choices are 60 hertz or 50 hertz. And setting number 10 is the number of batteries in series. And four 12 volt batteries in series is 48 volts. Uh, just leave this on the default uh, number four for a 48 volt system. Setting number 11 is the utility charging current. This is the number of amps that you can use to charge your battery off of the grid. Also keep in mind that uh, the charging current will be affected by setting number two, the overall current level. Setting number 12, this is the battery voltage. Uh, when we drop to this level, uh, we will switch from battery back to the grid again. And this worked with our setting number one if we were in SBU mode. So the next setting, setting number 13, is when it recharges, the battery recharges to this level, we switch back and start using the battery again. And setting 14 is four different uh, charging modes. OSO is only solar charger, and like it sounds, only the solar charger works. The grid charger does not work in this mode. And next is SNU, which is solar and utility. Um, both chargers will work at the same time. And this is charge utility. This is the utility has the priority. It will charge only off the utility until the utility is not available on a power outage or something, and then it will charge off of solar. And this is charge solar. This, the solar has the priority. It will charge only off of solar power unless the solar is not available at nighttime and so forth. Um, and then it will charge off the utility. And setting number 15, this is the annoying beep. That's not what it's called in the manual, but it's what it is. Uh, this may be one of the first settings you want to get in and change. Uh, anyway, I keep it off, but uh, let's turn it on and let you hear what it sounds like. Everything you do from now on beeps until you can't stand it anymore. But anyway, go to setting 15, turn it off, hit enter, and it stops. Ah. And this 16 is the backlight for the display. Uh, most people will just let this run all the time, but if you want it to go off, you can turn the backlight off and it will go out about five minutes after the last time you press a button. Anytime you press a button again, it will light back up. And next is an alarm that goes off if the main power source is interrupted. And that could be the grid power or it could be the battery power, depending on what mode you're running in. And number 18 is an overload bypass. Um, again, if it ends in D, it's bypassed and it doesn't do anything. If it ends in E, 
it's engaged and what happens here is on an overload uh, it switches from battery to grid and the next three settings only work if you used user mode in the batteries type in setting number five but if you use user you get bulk charge float charge and then 21 is a low battery cutoff which will shut the inverter down if the battery gets below that setting if back in your battery type that you picked agm are flooded all of these settings will be done for you automatically setting 22 is the solar balance by default this is enabled and what that means is you can keep charging your battery at the maximum charge level that you set plus you can power loads up to the maximum limit of the grow watt which I believe is 120 amps and obviously the maximum that you can get out of your solar panels if this setting is disabled though both your uh, charging and your loads are limited by your maximum current that you set earlier okay so next if you go up um, you can't reach setting 23 and without turning off the inverter we'll come back to that so setting 24 Okay, number 24. Um, this is kind of a special use case, but um, I have it disabled. If you enabled this, uh, what it basically does is there is a, uh, a relay on the bottom of the grow watts. And if you run on battery, that relay would then close. If you ran on line input, it would open. Okay, and here's one way that this might be used. Let's say you have an off-grid system and you're using a generator and solar. When you're running the generator, let's say the generator is bonded, meaning the ground and the neutral are tied together. So you want to make sure that over at your breaker panel, you are not bonded because you only want to have one place in the system that is bonded or you cause all kinds of return paths in dangerous situations. So at this point, your relay is off according to um, setting number 24. All right, now let's switch over to solar and battery power. At this point, you need the breaker panel to be bonded. And to do that, what we're going to do is have the relay come on. That relay is going to drive a larger relay or a contactor and connect the ground in the neutral in the breaker panel and now the breaker panel is bonded and again you only have one place that is bonded in the system right now and now we're on our final setting which was setting 23 and you can only get to it if you turn off the inverter so we're going to reach underneath of the inverter and turn it off with the switch and as you can see the lights went out okay now we can switch to setting number 23 and over here in the parameters, you can see I'm running in SIG, which is single mode, meaning just one unit running by itself. And um, these that start with a two, these are all for split phase. And you put a different number on each one of the uh, units that you have. These ones that start with a three are for three phase hookup. And PAL is for parallel. You can hook multiple units together. They run in single phase still at 120, but you get more power. So, not, for example, two units running in parallel would give you 6,000 watts. And in the manual, you can find uh, the details of how to set up all of these different modes. Okay, so let's uh, reach back under and turn this back on. Okay, and that does it for this long-winded video. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video. Hey, reach down and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of these. Thanks. Have a great day.